Throughout this course I've mentioned a few times that you're not going to be modelling absolutely every last detail as a 3D object. You will do sort of general arrangement modelling of your scheme and then you'll get to a certain level of detail where you'll draft that detail out in 2D and that's where detail components and repeating detail components come into their own. Now the next unit that follows on from this I'll cover repeating detail components but for this unit we'll concentrate just on detail components. I'm going to show you how that works now. So if I switch to 3D, just got a very simple 3D model here just to use as an example. Uh, just some walls, a floor, some furniture uh, and some doors and windows. No roofs on there but uh, there's enough there just to, to show you what I need to demonstrate. So let's go back to a plan. Now let's take a section through one of these uh, walls. So there is a section and I've done a call out there. You'll recall the use of call outs from an earlier unit. So let's pretend this is um, a real project we're working on. We've modeled our basic shell and we want to start looking at the detail now. Uh, producing some details of how all these different elements are going to go together. I say you'd probably get to this level of detail and now you're going to start embellishing the model with 2D details in specific views. So you could either start detailing up this section view that we're in here, section 1, or quite typically you would then do a call out of specific areas and you would start detailing the call out. So let's go ahead and do that. I've already created a call out here. Let's go ahead and switch to that call out. So this call out is set at 1 to 5 as a scale. So again, we are still just looking at the model as it's cut through. So there's no brick or block coursing there. There's no insulation. The windows where they're cut through the window families are very simplistic. So it's probably at this level where you would then start to add 2D details. Now you'll recall from a unit, um, a couple of units ago on detail lines where I said you could actually use detail lines and start drafting all these details out um, as you would do in AutoCAD for example. But quite typically you would, this is where you would use detail components, sort of predefined blocks to start adding your details. So I'm just going to show you how that works now. Now please don't worry too much about the, the sort of technical robustness of what I'm drawing. I'm not saying this is a, an architectural solution. It's just the principle of adding the standard detail blocks and building up your detail section and your callouts. So there is our view we want to detail. We need to go to annotate and on our detail panel. Now if you hit this little pull down you've got three different options there. Say in the next unit I'm going to cover repeating detail components but for now we'll just, just concentrate on detail components. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. Now again depending on what template your project was based on you will have different uh, detail components loaded in here available for your use. So let's just have a look um, scroll down here Let's just put some on a at random. There are brick, brick and blocks there. Let's just go for this window head. Now this is one of the um, default detail components supplied by Autodesk. So it's not a specific window from a, a, a manufacturer. But it's enough to show us the principle. So we could, for example, put that on there. Now obviously, if we were doing this for real, um, we'd be setting this out, you'd have some idea of exactly uh, where you want that to sit in relation to the, the underside of this block for example, you sort of have a, a packing space, um, but you get the idea that we've basically applied a 2D view specific detail on top of this uh, model view, so we're starting to build up a detail section here. Um, let's go ahead and put some more down. So go back to detail component. Let's just give you a flavor of some of the things in here. Um, P, 
hurling rails. There's some timber studs there. You can imagine you might sort of have uh, joists up against the block work. So the um, technical resolution is, is not what's important here. It's just the principle that you have taken a view of your model which only goes to a certain level of detail. I mean, take the wall for example. Um, the thicknesses are all correct or should be if you set the wall type up so your zones are correct but what's missing is the coursing you've got no insulation in here um, so this is where you would start adding your detail with 2D details and detail components are really at the, the heart of that, that detailing process So I'm just going to show you very quickly again how to start placing your details. So first of all, decide on which view you want to place them. So these work in, in any view type where you can see the model. So you could actually start detailing a plan view, for example, um, or an elevation or a section or typically a call out. Let's just go back to that call out one. So choose your view, go to annotate, the detail panel, and detail component. Your type selector will give you a list of the detail components currently loaded into this project. I'll show you very shortly how to load in additional ones. Choose your detail component and simply click to place. Now a little tip here is if you need to uh, better distinguish between the detail components you're placing and the underlying 3D model. If you don't have anything selected in your view and you look at the view properties, there is a parameter there, the third one down, called display model. Now, by default, it's set to normal. If I switch it to half tone, all the model elements in this view are then greyed out or shown in half tone and we can now clearly see the 2D details that we're placing. So you might want to set the view up like that so you can better see uh, or distinguish between the details that you're adding and the underlying 3D model. When you first install Revit, it installs with a library of components supplied by Autodesk and that includes um, folders containing literally hundreds of detail components for you to use. So I'm going to show you how to load some of those now. So remember annotate, component, detail component and there we are ready to start placing the components we've got available in this project. But if you look up on the ribbon there is a load family button now available. Go ahead and click that and the folder you are interested in is the one called detail items. Now if I double click on there, there is a whole range of folders nested inside that detail items folder. Now if I just show you very quickly some of these um, at random, there's little thumbnails there, all sorts of toilets, baths, Let's just go back up all sorts of components, literally hundreds in here, clad and covering, let's go to profile cladding, all sorts of different profiles there. Now it's going to be quite time consuming and laborious for you to actually go through all those and to see what's available. Now luckily someone has produced a free PDF that you can download off the internet which acts as an index or a catalog to all these detail components and it actually lists them all out and shows you all the thumbnails. So all you need to do is Google Revit PDF detail components and you will find that free PDF download. It's worth just keeping that handy maybe on your desktop for you to look through and use as a reference guide to actually see what folders the different detail components are in and see what is available to you. Now even with those couple of hundred detail components that Autodesk supplies for you in the installation library, 
invariably you're going to need to create uh, detail items that aren't included so you're going to need to sort of customize these or create your own so I'm just going to show you the concept or the principle of how you do that now so if we take this detail component here that we've already placed as soon as we select it because it's a Revit family a component family we get the edit family button I'm going to click on that now that immediately takes us into the family editor so it sort of parks the project environment just to one side temporarily it loads that component into the family editor ready for editing and we can simply take any of these lines adjust them so if there is a detail component that's similar to what you're after so let's say this sort of timber section here we need a different size we can just take one that's similar edit it load it into the family editor make some changes remember file save as give it a new name so it doesn't uh, overwrite the existing one and then load that into our project so I'm just going to go back now into the project environment likewise we could start from fresh uh, creating a new detail component so we would go to the application menu new and it's a new family we want to create and it is a detail item or detail item line based select detail item as the template on which to base or which to create our new content again the family editor opens and you've got all the content creation tools here I say creating custom uh, Revit content is beyond the scope of the beginners course but if you if you're interested in this just check out the courses section at bimscape.com um, and there are courses dedicated to creating your own custom content so I'm just gonna come out of there hit the X close the family editor which immediately throws us back into the project environment just want to talk now about detail groups so we've just seen how we can load in or create our detail components we can start to place these on top of our 3d model views so using our 3d model as as a template if you like to, to lay out the exact position of these details so I've got three different detail components here so not probably the most realistic architectural example but I'm just going to to place these together close proximity so say so if you disregard exactly what these items are and how they go together and whether it's sort of water site etc uh, let's just imagine for a second that um, these different components come together to form this assembly at this point we can actually save a collection of detail components together as a group so if you've got a, a number of places in your scheme where you need to document that window head and it always has that condition ie made up of those particular components what we can do if I fence just the detail items so I've got the three different detail components there I now have the option to save them as a group create a group so I will call that window oh, take out the G at the front window head 01 hit OK that now behaves as a group so I can copy that and put that same detail that collection of detail components in as many different positions or on different views as I need to so now if I go to annotate there is an option on that detail panel for detail group place detail group and you will have a list of all the groups you've created so there's our new on window head one and we can just stamp it into position so nothing stopping me at all now going to completely different view let's change that section down to 1 to 20 detail group place detail group make sure it's in the type selector the one we want and put it in position just bear in mind the detail level um, you've got that set at will determine how clear that displays with the thickness of the lines etc
We've just seen how convenient it is to save these detail components together in assemblies or detail groups and then reuse them. But what if we want to reuse these on future projects? Well, Revit actually has the ability to create standard libraries, so detail libraries. Um, so what we need to do, I'm going to show you how that, that works now. So all we need to do is select the detail component, go to your application menu, save as. Now you need to choose library. Select library and select group. Now, for this to work, you need to save a new Revit project and that project will act as the library itself. So you could call that standard detail library. It would have a .rvt file extension and group to save. So it's, it's detected because we've selected it, the actual group and it will put that 2D detail into that Revit project. So over time you can start saving your 2D details to that specific Revit project which you've established as your details library. And then when you want to reuse the details on a future project, let's say we've opened a blank project now, you need to go to the insert menu and you need to insert from file and you need to insert 2D elements from file. You would now go and navigate through and find that Revit project that you dedicated as your standard details library. And it would then give you the option to bring in uh, whichever details you wanted out of that library. So Revit is very much geared up for reusing components, albeit 3D components, 2D details, um, we'll see later on in the course how we can utilize CAD details that you already maybe have produced from AutoCAD etc. So it's not about reinventing the wheel, it's about customizing or creating components and then saving them for reuse later on. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.